a big week for Hezbollah in Lebanon also. Finally, the bitter fruits of their victory over Israel in the war two summers ago came home in the form of five live prisoners and to get back those thousands of Lebanese prisoners. I'm talking about the thousands of prisoners, the five live prisoners. These are the prisoners that have to be released. On the Arab street, Kuntar is a hero. The fact that one of his victims was a harmless, innocent four-year-old child isn't relevant. So, congratulations to Hezbollah and all my friends in Lebanon who have been celebrating this week. I believe that from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea, in the land called Israel Stroke Palestine, there should be one democratic state. Victory when we enter free, Arab, dignified Jerusalem. Side Hassan Nasrallah, and this is because he is a true and genuine leader. Al Mautul Israel. Who says what he means and means what he says. <laughs> who never promises what he can't do, but always does what he promises. <laughs> Alhamdulillah, may God protect Said Nasrallah, the leader of the Lebanese resistance. Well, a little earlier I spoke to George Galloway, and I put it to him that he could only expect expulsion from the party, given that he had incited British troops to disobey orders and other countries' troops to rise up against them. Our sons and daughters, our brothers and sisters, were in Iraq, risking their lives, losing their lives. 130 Labour MPs or more opposed this war. Only one went that far, and indeed on a foreign TV station. And that was you. Well, I'm sorry I don't ex accept your uh, um, designation of some stations as foreign. Uh, I don't see the world in the way that you appear to. Two of the Muslim world's beautiful daughters, Jerusalem and Baghdad, are in the hands of foreigners today. That's what I'm in public life for. So an Arab TV station wasn't a foreign station? No, all stations I'm speaking to people. I don't regard some as foreign and some as ours. I don't see it as them and us. Two من أجل بالنسبة للعالم العربي اثنتين من بنات الدول العربية بغداد والقدس جوهرة العالم العربي أصبحت الآن بين أيدي هؤلاء الغزال أجانب ولا شيء لا شيء يمكن أن يفعله القادة العرب لأنهم في السرير ويقومون بالزنا مع I don't regard some as foreign and some as ours. I don't see it as them and us. Instead of increasing the production of oil, if they decided to discuss even to cut the production of oil, it would create absolute chaos in the Western economies. Make one fist and break the political and economic system. It's a day in the life, isn't it? This is the kind of when you're busy making plans for world revolution. I was a fully signed up soldier in the Palestinian resistance and I have remained so. He recruited me to this cause and I've been in it ever since. That was in 1975. In 1977, I went to Lebanon for the first time to visit the Palestinian revolution, which was headquartered there uh, under the leadership of the late President Yasser Arafat. I fell in love with this cause and this place so much that when my friends left, I stayed. And every day I would go and have breakfast with the President Arafat. He would feed me from his own hands. I became deeply absorbed in this cause. And thereafter, of course, it was personal, not just political for me. From that involvement, which lasted, as I say, from 1975 until now. I became more and more involved in the wider Arab world and the wider Muslim world beyond. I have visited most Arab countries.
I first befriended Yasser Arafat in the 1970s. And as the New York Times reported, this is summer camp on Arafat's TV. The day of shame last Wednesday when the fighters had to surrender in Janine and in Nablus. Why? Not because they didn't have the courage to continue, because they didn't have the bullets to fire. While the Arab regimes have doubled, tripled the security on their borders to make sure that not a single weapon, not a single bullet can reach the Intifada. Victory to the Intifada! Long live the resistance! Good evening to you, George. Yes, a couple Victor. of statements you made that I can't quite fathom out. Yesterday you said that the Israelis killed Yasser Arafat. I don't ever see that documented anywhere, that he was killed by the Israelis. And the second point I make about that, you're talking about the Palestinians, how poor and how they're scraping for a living and everything. Is it not true that Yasser Arafat, when he died, had millions and millions of pounds spread all over the world, and his wife was pictured in Paris buying designer clothes, or maybe that I have got it all wrong, or was that not true? Well, thanks, Victor. Uh, as a f matter of fact, it, it isn't true. It uh, isn't true. Fact, didn't so leave everybody any in the world's got it all wrong. Uh, Victor, you asked the question, so let me answer it. Yes, but Yasser okay. Arafat didn't leave any money at all. Yasser Arafat owned nothing except the uniform on his back. They wouldn't deal with Arafat. Then they besieged him, then they killed him. That's what I said last night. I say it again tonight. فسكتوا فأحدهم قال لي بصراحة الفرنساويين أعطونا التقرير الطبي سبب وفاة أبو عمار هو مرض الإيدز أما الفرنسيين رغم أنه تكلمت معهم تكلمت أطلب أني أشوف أي واحد منهم أو أسمع من أي واحد فيهم لم يجاوبوني ولكن لما توفى الرئيس ياسر عرفات بعثوا لي إيميل أو رسالة إلكترونية على أن الرئيس عرفات دخل عندهم المستشفى وبعد فحص الدم وجدوا أنه عنده مكروب الإيدز <تصفيق> 